go. Hello everybody, my name is Jim Kibler and once again this is a continuation of the series on building a flintlock rifle from one of our Colonial Rifle Kits. Last episode we talked about polishing brass hardware and now we're moving on to, to uh, polishing some of the metal parts. So more specifically we're going to talk about preparing the, the barrel for any kind of finishing. So, the first step in preparing a barrel is to draw file it. And uh, that removes any of the milling marks. And you can probably see there are some milling marks on the barrel. Now, these look worse than they actually are. It's a pretty fine finish. Um, so the draw filing does not take a great deal of time to do uh, to smooth the barrel out. So these are nice quality barrels. The dimensions are held very closely made by Rice Barrel Company, Jason Schneider and Rice Barrel Company. And we request actually that the, the finish be left in the milled state rather than sanded because the sanding operation tends to um, remove material and the dimensional, uh, uh, the, the ability for them to hold dimensions is dimi diminished if they are sanded. So we request they just be left in the milled condition and uh, then the finish can be brought down by draw filing. So if you're proficient with draw filing, it doesn't take a great deal of time. Um, about five minutes, maybe a little bit more per flat. And I only uh, generally finish the top five flats. So the side flats and the three on top. The ones that are in the stock, I don't worry about finishing. So um, I guess let's get to it talk about the draw filing process a little bit. So for draw filing, we use a mill file. And the mill file is a file that's flat, kind of rectangular cross section, and just has teeth cut in one direction. Um, rather than other types of files have teeth in a crossing pattern. In the, the fact that teeth are in one direction really um, allows you to get a finer, smoother finish. This particular one is made by a company called Baco. Uh, they're not uh, very common in this country. They're made in Portugal, but I found these to be very nice quality files, better than what, most of what's available today, although about any file will work. You can go and get, a, get one from you know, some of the big box stores and uh, you can get the job done with it. These are just a little nicer. Um, a note on files is the quality of files and has, seems to have taken a, a big crap here the last five or ten years. Um, I guess handwork and file work is not uh, the call for tools to do handwork and file work is, is not as great and there's always a push for cheaper and cheaper products. So companies like Nicholson used to make really nice files and they're not as nice as they used to be. But these Baco files are still very nice, so good quality. So if you can find them, I'd recommend them. This is an 8 inch. Uh, I'm not sure the, the cut on it, but it's an 8 inch mill file. So in order to draw a file, the process is basically to hold the... You can either push it away from me or pull it towards you. Either way works. I push it away from me, so I hold the, the tang of the file in my right hand and the tip of the file in my left hand. If you wanted to pull it towards you, you would do it opposite. For me, it's always worked best to push it away, just more comfortable. So the idea with draw filing is to hold the file, file more or less perpendicular to your workpiece, or the axis of your workpiece, so like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push it along the barrel. And uh, pretty quickly, these mill marks will go away. And in practice, I instead of it being perfectly perpendicular, I oftentimes angle it a little bit like that, I believe. You can tell by how it cuts. So as you're cutting, you can kind of change the angle a little bit. To, you'll find a sweet spot where it just peels the metal off a little quicker. So I'll demonstrate a little bit, and then I'll talk a little bit more about uh, some tips. Um, so we'll get to it. I like to hold it pretty close. If I hold it out here, I find there's more tendency for it to rock. So I like to hold it pretty close. 
to the, you know, not, too, not spread out too far. So we'll get to it. So you can see how quickly chips will tend to plug it. So you can kind of tap the chips loose out or you can slide the file along and get to a fresh area. I don't like to use any chalk or anything like that. I find that it doesn't really do a very good job. I'll hit the tang here a little bit. Okay, and I'm sliding along to try to find a little bit of a, a fresher area. And periodically I might tap out the, the swarf from the, or the chips from the file. As you approach a site, you have to be a little more careful. And I've removed the site. Okay, so as quick as that. As quick as that, we've... The area between the breech and the site, we've draw filed and it's a very nice finish. It, it, it almost approaches a, I bet, a coarser ground finish. So all those mill marks are gone. Simple as that. Now there's a few tips. better marker I can show you but one of the challenges when you're just a beginner is to, to not rock the file you want the file to be flat on the surface that you're trying to draw file so I'm reading the surface as I'm filing I'm looking at the surface and making little minute adjustments to the file until I find the flat sweet spot now that might be hard to do when you're a little less experienced so one thing that can help is to take a marker make a series of series of lines they can be a little bit of a guide. So, for example, if I'm filing away, you know, and I'm just, I can make it so if I tip it to the side, I just hit the, hit the mark on one side, you know, and I know that's not what I want. I want to hit it, hit it more, more even. So you can look at those lines and make sure you're removing material more evenly. So that can be a, a bit of a help. You may find it to be helpful. So we'll continue on with this. This is really going nice and smooth. So I'm gonna go the other direction to work up to the site. So that looks pretty good. And just go far enough. Don't go beyond removing the, the mill marks. Okay, I'm gonna start from the other end now. Part's moving around a little bit, so it's hanging out of the vise a little far, but we should still be okay. I'm going to slow up or along the side here so it doesn't don't wreck it. Okay. And it's perfectly fine to, to move the slide, the, 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 the file back and forth. You don't have to lift it, it's just it's perfectly fine, so don't worry about that. Some people like a little bigger file, but I find this eight inch file to be pretty much of a sweet spot. It works real well for me. Okay. So we can go along it. it. Looks like it's all pretty good. I'll take a look and see. Got to do the very tip here, which again, kind of got a little bit more careful. Area in front of the site to the muzzle. Let me slow down a little bit. Okay, so that's done. Look along it, make sure I didn't miss any areas. Looks pretty good. So as quick, simple as that, that whole top flat is done, five minutes or less. So we're gonna also do the tang. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll draw file the tang right now, just to smooth it up. These tangs are, this barrel is a little harder material, so it doesn't draw, oops, excuse me, doesn't draw, hang it. 
You can drop off quite as easily. But still looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll do the same process on the five other flats. I guess I should say the four other flats. After they're done, I'll oftentimes take the file and run down the corners, kind of roll it over a little bit to soften the, that edge. Um, it, some original barrels have very sharp corners, but that's much less common. Typically, you'll see that edge being broken a little bit or softened. Uh, so, you also have to do a little file work on the, the muzzle. So don't worry about this disrupting the crown or anything like that, it's perfectly fine. So there's kind of sharp corners on the muzzle. And we can come across the face. And clean up the, the face a little bit. And then after that, we'll come and we'll put a little, a little chamfer where the where the muzzle and the and the flat meets. Oh, come on, vice here. Just uh, softens things up a little bit. You can round it a bit if you want, nothing wrong with it. That, nice chamfer, this looks good too. But you could break these corners off a little bit if you want. So that'll take care of that. Uh, after draw filing, you can finish a barrel directly on the draw a fine draw filed surface and it's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's historically appropriate, it can look good, you can brown it, you can blew it in some fashion, charcoal blew it. You could age it, whatever you want to do. The draw file surface works okay. If you want it a little finer, you can take a brace of paper, sort of like we did in the video on, on the, the hardware, and then wrap it around your file or a block, and you can you know, work down the, the flat, and, and keep using a brace of paper to clean it up and make it a little finer. Um, I wouldn't get too crazy and carry it away with it. Not a bit. Draw filing it and then maybe getting a bit of a polish on the surface after draw filing without trying to remove all the, all the file marks is not a bad process either. I think you see that quite a bit on original work. Uh, so that's the, more or less a summary of draw filing a barrel. So um, don't be intimidated by it. And uh, with a nice, use a nice sharp file, use a new file. Don't try to use a dull file or, or it will take forever. Um, that's about all I have to, to, to talk about on the subject right now, all that comes to mind anyway. So um, we're gonna probably wrap up the video here and uh, we'll pick up with finishing some of the other metal parts here in the next one. Thank you much.